Come on in. Here's the star of the show. All right. All right. I think they had for a, a title for my presentation, uh, <coughs> swapping or changing from, uh, let's see, from faucet to pipe planter, which is is one of the things I'll talk about, and maybe I didn't give them a, an appropriate title, but I wanted to talk about just fine-tuning your, your irrigation. I'll talk about some of the tools that uh, Ken mentioned as well. Um, just so I can get a grasp of the crowd, uh, how many are, are farmers in the room? Uh, so about half, maybe. How many are using, how many irrigate, I guess all of you, or you wouldn't be here. How many are using uh, a computerized hole selection tool like faucet or, or pipe planter or something like that. Uh, how about surge valves? Pretty few. Um, I'll talk about a few of those things and throughout this next 15 minutes or however long I talk, if you have any questions um, or you think maybe what I'm saying uh, may not align with your thoughts, speak up and we'll, we'll talk about them. I'm here to learn just as much as, as you are. Uh, this is uh, not a very good shot of our of our farm, an aerial image of our farm, and we were in the cotton business like everybody else in the Mississippi Delta a hundred years ago, and transitioned into grains. Uh, started growing rice in 1974, and we haven't planted rice the last couple of years. But I think growing rice is a pretty good introduction into irrigation. I think any experience that I have with irrigation um, or anything I've learned, I think I can point to 20 years or 30 years of growing rice because you're dealing with water when you grow rice. Uh, we've moved a lot of dirt on our farm and landformed a lot. Above that highway, that yellow line there, most of our fields are about 40 acres in size and they're all square. So that should make it easy to manage uh, below the highway you'll see we still have some old ditches that run through and a lot of our fuels are irregular shaped and before I started using faucet or pipe planter I thought that because our fields were square that there wasn't a lot of utility for something like that but I found out otherwise even on a square field you can save water and save money by using something like faucet or pipe planter. Um, certainly on the irregular shaped fields you can save money uh, using something like that. So the tools that I use, um, I've been using polypipe since, I don't know, we started when I was in fifth grade or something. So I've been uh, around or using polypipe for a long time and thought I knew about everything there was to know about uh, irrigating with polytubing uh, until a few years ago when Mississippi State hired an irrigation extension specialist and let us know about some other tools that were available and about that time or actually a little before that time we realized or admitted or came to grips with the fact that this water we were pumping out of the ground was not an inexhaustible resource and we needed to conserve the water so uh, we became familiar with these tools uh, faucet or pipe planter um, I'll talk a little bit now about the difference in the two. Faucet, and I went to Mississippi State, so, um, you know, my, I say I got a good education at Mississippi State, but I was not an engineer. I was not a computer programmer. Sheet, I thought. I, I downloaded it a few years before I started using it and just really was not too interested in all those numbers and the input that it took to generate what I thought was maybe not the right thing to do. But I buckled down and worked on faucet and in a year's time created a plan for every field that we have. And then along came for free, now in its second year I think, pipe planter from Delta Plastics. You get the same thing, your output is essentially the same thing, but the, the information that you can put in the pipe planter is so much more detailed and it's going to produce a better plan. It's free. Uh, it will save you money. It will save you water. I don't think we've ruptured a poly pipe line since we started using faucet or pipe planter. That in itself is enough to 
spend the time to figure out how to use the, uh, the program. It's web-based, so you're going to keep up with it very easily because you can access it from the web. Right now I could access every field plan that we have. Um, so I would encourage you to use Pipe Planner. Um, we'll talk more about that. Flow meters and timers. Um, I think we have flow meters on about 50% of our wells now and have a portable flow meter to capture the flow on those that we don't. Soil moisture sensors. Uh, you just had a good course in the different types and how they work. I really don't know how they work or what they're measuring. I know the ones that I've got, I know how much they cost, and I know what I think is good and bad about those. I'll tell you about that. And then surge valves, um, I've got a slide on that. I can give you my, my thoughts about that. Um, that's maybe a typical setup. We've got 160 acres, 440s with a well in the center. Uh, three of the fields are really nice and square. Uh, one of them has a little bit of curve. That's just an example of somewhere that faucet will save you money instead of just pumping out the end and letting water run out the pipe on that south uh, west field. Faucet will, or pipe planter will help you out. Um, I said it's the, the most important tool and I really believe that it's the most important tool that you can use to save water, money, and labor. And the good thing about it you know, when you're, you, you start planting your crop and you're busy and then you start spraying and before you get finished spraying it's time to irrigate and you never, had a, never have a chance to catch your breath, you can get a plan, an irrigation plan on every field you have right now. When you leave this conference you can go home, you can capture your flow rate, um, maybe your engine's out there, maybe you've got an electric well, sometime between now and when it's time to do it you can capture your flow rate, you can take your elevation shots, you can do whatever you need to do to get the information to put in Pipe Planner. So I would encourage you to do that now before <clears throat> all hell breaks loose with your crop and you're busy and don't have time and end up going back just like you did last year doing the same thing. Um, the other thing about Pipe Planner, since it is web-based, you're going to go back to that same plan the next year and if you make notes through the year on what worked well and what didn't, you can fine tune it some more and update your plan for the next, next irrigation. Um, I really didn't even know they made different si uh, sizes of polytubing. Uh, we always got 15 inch 9 mil and we, we would rupture that, we would get this 15-15 uh, 15, 15 transfer because it was tougher and thicker and harder to rupture, but we would do that. We would still bust it. Um, I think they sell about seven different sizes of polytubing, and I'm using 12, 15, 18, and 22. Uh, if you've got a big well, one that's putting out a lot of water, you need a bigger size pipe. And I don't know why I didn't realize that until a few years ago. I was just getting that thicker pipe, you know, because it would take that pressure a little better. but you need um, you need to base and, and pipe planner will tell you will suggest to you what size polytubing to use um, but you need to have a little bit of experience and knowledge and uh, consider a few things before you take their suggestion most of the time they're right but if you have a real high flow rate say over 2500 gallons per minute and you have a pretty long run of pipe pretty long field you're going to need maybe that 22 inch polytubing and pipe planner might suggest just 18. Um, and same way it goes if you're using 15, uh, the more water you got the bigger size pipe you'll need. And on the other side we were using all that 15, I've got some wells that are really poor that pump 1100 gallons a minute and I was having trouble getting a good size hole, a good plan, you know my poly pipe was all flat and didn't look good and water just creeping out. There wasn't a consistent flow so I found out there I needed to be using a, a 12 inch. Uh, some of them I might even need a 10 inch but I haven't used any 10 inch yet, just 12. Um, this 22 inch polytube and this is a little video of it. Uh, 
it is huge. It's about this big around. It looks kind of strange. I, that's really a good video too. It's upside down. Um, anyway, I wanted to let me see if I can play that again and look how consistent the water is coming out of the out of the holes. And really, I need some scale there to show you how big that is. Um, this is a site that every morning we would go and fix the poly pipe because it had blown in the night. <laughs> All right, um, any questions about, I mean, there's a session going on right now about how to use Pipe Planner, and if you were interested in that, um, you would be there, I guess. But there's also a video, an instructional video, on Mississippi Soybean Promotion Board's website, which is uh, mssoy.org, and also on Delta Plastics' website. It's really a good video on how to use Pipe Planner, and if I can figure it out, I assure you, you can figure it out. Any questions about pipe planner? You, yes. Well, you mentioned flow meters. I'll ask about those. You, you said most of your wells you have a flow meter on them all the time. I have a permanent flow meter on. It, you must have the flow. You know, you get your driller's report or maybe your permit even has what your flow is. That's not accurate enough to use to put in pipe planner. You need to measure that flow. And from year to year, from year to year rather, that flow may change a little bit too. Well, it changes with, with us. It changes within the year. It now might. You, that's a tough one because are you, once are you, you commit. Diesel? Are you diesel? Are these electric wells? Uh, like some of both. Some. I don't have any electrics that I can, uh, you know, change, change the, the, the flow. Right. The um, right. But I think you just have to. I, hopefully, it's not changing enough through the year that would it would affect your your plan because there's really not anything you can do about that. Um, Say it's 1500 when you check it in the spring, and then it's dropped down to what 1200? A thousand, yeah, mm -hmm. that that would be difficult. Yeah, um, almost busted at the start, so it'll yeah. Full and I think that's one of those things you might figure out with experience, you know, how to do. But you you got to have a flow meter, you don't have to have a permanent flow meter on every well, but you have to have. A portable flow meter to capture the flow to be able to put it in pipe planner. What is the kind of this question? What what's the benefit of having a permanent one versus a, a portable one? You know, if you're capturing it for a plan, I mean, once you poke your holes, it's yeah. Exposed. Well, you don't have to carry that portable around, and also that permanent flow meter. You can do some of the things that Ken was talking about with figuring out how much water you're applying. Are you are you over applying? Or are you under applying? Things like that, and keep up with your your use. Um, so that's the main advantage. I would this, say. this faucet program is it <clears throat> uh, soil types. I live earthquake screwed our world up a long time ago, and we'll have sharky clay on one end, then you'll hit silt loam, and then you'll hit sharky clay again. And my field is, you know, it's precision tilted. And I realize, you know, it's going to, is there a place that you can enter that data? No, there's not. And that, that algorithm that is faucet doesn't take into consideration any soil type. It's going to generate, uh, both faucet and pipe, pipe planter are going to generate a time, an estimated time that it's going to take you to finish that irrigation run. And you're going to look at that time and decide if you need to set another set. But soil type is one of those things that experience is just going to have to have that to play in. That, that that does help a lot. You're going to need 22 inch uh, tubing with some big holes there for sure. Pipe planter does give you an option for three different soil types. But yeah, but it doesn't affect anything. It doesn't affect it, but it does. You can. And it, you know, there's a couple of deals where it does yeah. um, size the pipeline. I don't know about that. Um, maybe so. I think it just, that's just for your information. Time, time and the size and all that. Um, yeah, I haven't, anytime I I've changed soil types, I haven't seen any difference in the output. That would affect, if everything was perfect through the field, you know, if it was the same soil type throughout, but the pumping, I, I may pump like eight hours in this switch side or something like that, and I have better luck like that just until. Everything gets wet because if I don't, I have, I have a mess. Yeah, maybe surge valves are what you need. Uh, we'll talk about. Yeah. 
Yes. Sir, uh, that's right. In general, I still well. long to run out in one to two inches in these cracking clays. If you really let it crack, it can take four inches to get to the tail end. But in general, if you plan for three, which when you're saying that you're putting three inches of water on for a 24 hour span. So you make sure that's how we break our runs. Yeah. So that you don't get to where it takes two days to pump out. You have a pretty good, I mean, my experience, I can usually get out no more three inches in there. You know, it really doesn't take more than that. Our cotton soils, some of those we can put out an inch and be at the tail ditch. Pretty know, quickly, see. yeah. So then we, if I, if I had a lot of history with that field, I double what I would normally do. If it's a crack and clay, you got to be a little bit more on your game. Right. You and not stress them out. So all of this stuff is a reason to have that permanent meter to know how much water you're putting out. And I don't know if these conversations would have taken place five years ago when our objective was just to water the field. You know, we really weren't irrigating. We were just pumping water and letting it try to get to the end of the field. Um, I've got a few of these, well, quite a few of these soil moisture sensors, and I've got a few remarks about them. Uh, the cheapest is not always the best option, and they're no good at all if you're not actually using the data. Um, I bought some of these uh, more inexpensive uh, watermark sensors with a data logger. They're about 600 bucks. I've got about 25 of them around the farm. I maybe regret that now. Uh, they're a little difficult to install for me now, not for, for the scientists in the room, but they're a little difficult for me to install and make work year after year and get the data and actually use it. Um, so I've got a few of these ones with telemetry that are about 3,000 bucks, and I think that more fits what, what uh, is going to work for me a little better. And all these numbers are so shocking, you know, you see $3,000 for one of these uh, soil moisture sensors or what's a surge valve, 2,800 bucks or something, and you think, damn, that's a lot of money to waste uh, just to be able to do maybe a little bit better job irrigating, but when you stop seeing those $25,000 loads of diesel come in, that's when you'll start feeling better about some of this money that you're spending. Uh, I was at a conference a few years ago and a guy down south of me was talking about these 15 surge valves he had that cost almost 3,000 bucks. I thought, my gosh, that's a good way to waste a bunch of money. Uh, but now I have about 20 of the things and, and need a few more of them to, to be able to get around. Um, I promise you surge valves will save you some labor. They'll reduce some fuel and energy and in turn save water and will get the job done better, for lack of a better word, particularly on those type soils that you're having trouble penetrating down. You're putting one inch and you're at the tail ditch. I don't know exactly how the damn things work either. There's a computer in them that tells it when to switch back and forth and all I do is push the button. There's an advance time that I set on, on these surge valves um, and I'm learning more and more every year about them but I'm still, I still believe that they're a good tool to use because I'm continuing to purchase a few when I can year after year. Uh, I had in my mind again on these square 40 acre fields where we have two irrigation sets. I had in my mind that the surge valve needed to be in the center of the field and you ran a supply line to it and split out both ways and that is not what to do. Your surge valve needs to be at the riser and split from there. Um, another thing to consider about these surge valves is what your flow rate is. Again, the need to know what your flow rate is um, before you decide which size to buy. I think if you've got over about 2,000 gallons, you're going to need a 12 inch and under that a 10 inch will work. But there are different sizes and it depends on how much water you're trying to put through them. Um, surge valve questions. And I can make up something if I don't know the answer. <laughs> have you tried them on any of your clay? Maybe some of your more rice ground? Have you used them there? You yeah, that's mostly what I got. I can lie to myself and call some <laughs> land mixed or, you know, light or whatever, but it's pretty heavy dirt. And yeah, I'm, I mean, 
it's the same concept really, but uh, I think there was a perception. Now one thing I don't use on that type of soil as much or any is that advance. I mean, I use only the advanced cycle. I don't use the, what do they call the other cycle? Soak. The soak cycle. I don't even know what that is. I've seen it on there. But most of the time when I have advanced on the advanced cycle, I'm already down where I need to be on those type of soils. Generally, what interval do they serve? Does they serve by it, it all depends on uh, that advance time that you put in. It may be five hours. You tell it what to do? You, you, you tell it what to do by the advance time. So you've got a 40 acre field that it takes uh, 28 hours to water. Well you put that 28 in and it knows how to swap back and forth from that time. So you're watching it and if it's going to take 32 hours you can bump it up and, and let it Did run you find that you push water to the other end faster? The without a doubt. Without a doubt. Can you explain what? Yeah. Well, there's a nice little video on prsurge.com that will explain why. But let me tell you this. I had some soybeans about this tall, and it was hot and dry, and they weren't growing. So we had to make the decision about whether to kill them or let them die. You know, whether we try to water these little soybeans or we just let them die. So we turned the water on and we let it run for about eight hours and we turned it off for five or six hours. And we turned the water back on and we turned it off. Turned it on and off like that. And that's the same concept of a surge valve. And we ended up getting finished quicker like that and without damaging the Less soybeans. Damage. Yeah. So you're doing less total pumping mm -hmm. per acre. Yeah. What, kind, what kind of soil type is this? Uh, Forestdale. Just, you know, let's call it some pretty good buckshot. Is that because those cracks seal at some point when water first hits them, then your next application coming over that wet ground, it doesn't penetrate as deeply in those cracks because they sealed with the first surge? Uh, I think so. That and the fact that the further you get down the hill with that water, the slower your progression makes. And you're constantly pumping that full amount. Um, you almost have to have to try it and see it to, to believe it. Uh, but think about this. One of those aluminum Ys that you buy is about 800, 900 bucks. I mean, they're expensive. That's about half the cost of one of these surge valves. You might get one and try it with that with that aluminum wire. Somebody has to go out there and pull that handle and change it over. And with the surge valve, it's doing it by itself. If you're already there, though, man. You well, if you live there, like they, I know. But what if you have 30 fields or 10 fields? Um, okay. But your first trial, you decided you were going to kill those beans and probably would have. Right. You let it run 30 hours to get to the other. That's right. So you just decided, well, I'm going to run it about five hours. Is that the just Yeah, I just yeah, I was just strictly guessing. Yeah. That's what five I do hours, most of my work. Run it five hours somewhere else, <laughs> and come back and run it five minutes. That's right. That's right. All right. Any other? That's that's all I have, unless there's some questions. Uh, I want to know if anybody uh, where we had rice fields, and there's a rice lady down there. Uh, our ground doesn't forgive that rice lady. I don't so know if any does. You can land plant it until you're tired to wear out. You, when the water gets there, it's going to spread out. Yeah. I'm growing all my soybeans on a bed, and I think yeah, that I makes a big, yeah. a big difference. Yeah. Um, being an old rice farmer, I hated beds. You know, we, we just didn't have any until we started doing a better job irrigating and figuring out we, we needed them. On, on your question about the well losing as the year goes on, we had a couple of wells right next to the hills that start out strong, end up weak. And what we ended up doing is we kind of got a flow, and our flow said you needed to go to 12 inch pipe with a kind of in, in the middle range. And so when we first started out, we had to actually idle our engine back to keep from busting the pipe. But at the end of the year, we were at max on it. And we were still pumping the same water, so it's kind, you were able to were say, it's kind of as you were saying. You got to get to know your field because they're yeah. Uh, you had some RPMs in reserve to right, be able to right. keep the flow about constant. Keep notes on all that stuff. I keep it all right here. <laughs> yeah. 
One thing I will say about the note, I mean, notes are, are certainly good, but again, back to that pipe planter and faucet and y'all are using it, you can't outguess that thing. No matter if you've been uh, watering this field for 20 years, you cannot outguess the whole pattern. You just can't do it. It will save you money and water and time every time. Where you went to your surgery valves, for an example, like on a square 40, is that a square 40 that you could water in one set before? Would you run one piece? No, if I, had, if, if I could water it in one set, I could find a better place to use that okay. surge valve. That's why I, I think that was my question revolved around the clay soils, because a lot of ours are 40. We got enough well, we can water it in one set, yeah. like a 24-hour full length. And yeah. water the whole thing. Unless I thought I could break that 24-hour up into two 12s uh -huh. and, get, and get and get finish quicker like that, and I bet you could with that's a surge. Why, that's why I was curious, that's why I was asking that question, because we haven't stepped off into the surge valves yet. Right. And that's what we were kind of... If you could hear get a clay set out in 10 hours, would you would you surge it? I don't think so, um, but it all depends on where the you know squeaky wheel is. I, I wouldn't on my farm because I would have another field that I could better utilize that surge valve. Oh, in 10 hours, no, I'd just blow some water out there. A duck, I mean, in a perfect world, if you set up perfect, the surge valve would be great. But if you're having to run toy pipe halfway across your field and then split in order to make this happen, I'm the guy that has to put it out and pick it up and do yeah. it. It's not worth it for all that. So, so all of that is, I mean, not, I don't think experience and your management, oh, it should override all of this. Um, you got to still... Just use the tools, but don't let them, don't rely solely on them. My neighbor uh, used pipe planter this year, and where he was breaking fields into two sets, pipe planter somehow, by the information he put in, told him he could do it in one set, and he didn't do as good a job irrigating when, when he should have just kept in mind his experience and, you know, let the tools complement his experience. All right. How are you? We'll be back doing the same show tomorrow <laughs> if you want to come back. <laughs>